Good afternoon, Dacast Car Customizers. So I have a whole bunch of these Aoshima Grachan cars you're looking at here. And they have this uh, Kaido Racer style where they're really slammed to the ground and have crazy Liberty Walk body kits on them. But as you can see, Aoshima is not very good with their wheels. Uh, these wheels here have no air passing between those four spokes. And uh, it just seems odd to me. Looks weird. Uh, mesh wheels, unfortunately, any brand has a challenge with that. You know, it's hard. You can't really mold mesh wheels in 164 and expect them to be durable. So that I can understand there. But these Watanabe wheels, again, I really think there should be air passing between those spokes because other brands like Kyosho would, would do it. You know, even Greenlight. So uh, this one I can understand, though. Again, it's pretty tight as far as the pattern goes. All right, well, anyways, <clears throat> this is brand of wheels called BNDS. I have seven different styles here that we're going to swap over. And uh, these are alloy wheels, so let's just uh, take a look at this one here. This is the SSR Mark III in silver. So you'll notice here, this is actually a 15-inch wheel in 164 scale, so which is, I believe, specifically made to fit these Aoshima Grachan cars because most diecasts have much bigger wheels than these. But you got this nice durable case. You got an instruction manual, which is, it's not that hard. You cut it out with a hobby knife. You want to sand off any extra metal if you didn't cut it very well. You want to clean off the aluminum wheels with some alcohol. <clears throat> because uh, when you're milling out metal parts, very often they're sprayed with oil so the cutting bit doesn't get uh, too hot. But obviously paint doesn't want to stick to oil, right? So it might make sense to do that. Then you have to paint the inside a little bit black because if you don't paint it black, the open pieces of the photo wedge, you're just going to see, see the silver wheel. You'll see in a second when I pull out the piece. Then you're supposed to crazy glue the thing, the disc onto the wheel, and then you have to put it into the the axle and through that and then it goes on to the axle tubes. The tires are already assembled so. Alright so maybe this instruction manual will make a little more sense when we look at this bag here. So it's nice that they give you eight sets of fiddle wedge pieces and you know the etching itself is quite nice. Let me get a better light angle here. It etched the holes where you can see my fingers but it also etched a different depth, so you know, there's a little more dimensionality to the disc. <clears throat> You'll clearly see here, it's got uh, the raw aluminum, which might have like a film of oil. Then you have two axle tubes, and then you have four axle ends that you'll probably have to use crazy glue again to um, put it together, or keep them from falling apart, really. Alright, so I'm going to take this out. We're going to do a little tutorial here. I'm going to dump it into this tray, in fact. And then let me get a better lighting, lower light camera angle. All right, so I'm going to dump this all in here so nothing goes rolling away onto the carpet. All right, so this uh, has two pieces of plastic front and back. The reason being is uh, if you cut this with a hobby knife, once you cut the second side off, it's the metal will probably fly off into oblivion. So I'm going to do this here. I'm going to cut it on, to, on top of this piece of... Sorry. I have to look past the camera. Yeah, I saw that it wanted to actually fly off, but that's why the plastic film is there. Okay. So now you got to peel away this plastic film from both sides. <clears throat> it's just a static film cling, it seems. I don't think it's, there's any adhesive or anything like that. Alright, so that disc it wants to fall out now. Alright, there's that one. Yep. So I think it's great that they give you eight pieces. So you can, you can mess up and 
you have four other chances. <clears throat> now the question is, did I cut enough metal away? Because, no, I did not. I think you can see there's a little bit of uh, extra metal sitting there. So, what I just use is a simple nail file. I just hold this thing in place. And then very lightly... I think it's gone. Well, no, I can actually still feel it, so... consider putting these in pliers but I'm afraid if you put them in pliers you might uh, destroy the etching because it's so thin okay so that one's gonna be used I'll put it on this side here so the wheel let's uh, clean this thing off here's a little tip I have if you like to modify your toys and stuff like that Oh, hold on, there's a metal disc out here. This is um, it's meant for people to do like hand nails, you know, nail polish. It's just a glass container, and it's got this siphon. So when you push this down, a pool of alcohol shows up at the top of the <clears throat> top of the thing there. So there's the alcohol. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm just going to use a Q tip here, jam it in. Mm, the Q tip's not dirty, but it's not to say that there isn't some sort of a oil residue inside these wheels, though. So. I'll just wash all four. Alright, so, you can see, hopefully, there's a bunch of ridges inside the base of this thing. You really need to just get that bottom ridge black, because if it wasn't black, again, you would just see the silver through the spoke holes of the uh, photo edge piece. So, sorry, I'm just making sure that alcohol is wicked away. So I got the, you know, a Sharpie Ultrafine here. And let's just put it in. Hmm. Okay, you might have to... You notice, you know, the, the Sharpie has a thickness to it, so... You can get the black in there, but you might have to push on the Sharpie very, very hard, because it seems like this uh, gap is a little tight there. But see, the middle doesn't have to be black, nor does the edge, because that's where the the photo edge piece is going to be glued down. Let me try a second one. I'm wondering if the tolerances are off on that one. Well, I have to push in a little bit. Not too much effort, but a little bit of force. But you can obviously use a paintbrush and black paint, but I kind of feel like that would take longer and just using a black sharpie I think you can hear the plastic rubbing in there alright well it's black enough I think we'll uh, do a little test fit here so that disc that I sanded the metal pieces off. Let me get that back. Let me just pop it in this one. All 
Alright, see? So I don't really see silver between those openings. I'm just seeing the black of the Sharpie. Well, maybe right there. But from the side view, I think it's good enough. If you're really adamant, I guess you could just paint the whole thing black, but I don't know if the crazy glue would stick to the paint, you know? It would stick to the paint, but then the paint might not stick to the aluminum wheel. Okay, so I unscrewed this guy. Let's take a look inside here and see the construction. So these Aoshimas just have black interiors. I'm going to repaint this. This one has a construction where, you know, these plastic walls, the axle's running through it. So I just twist and pull one of the wheels off, although that you might want to take the tire off as well if it's really tight. I find these axles are friction fits. Yeah, there's just a tiny knurling there on the end of the axle and uh, that's what's holding the wheel on. <clears throat> yeah, so that's pretty weak, the lack of air holes there. Hmm, that one came off a lot easier. I'm going to save these, just put them in a baggie somewhere else. Okay, so I want to do a test fit, really, because uh, I found that at least on uh, another model, I think, I put that Hot Wheels. Look how long these axle ends are. So I'm going to put this axle end inside this tube. And then I'm going to put the other axle end inside this tube. So now you can see they're bottoming out against each other, this axle end here. And yet there's so much tube missing. So what I'm afraid of is yeah, i got to cut the axle ends down. So you don't want to glue these axle ends in yet. This, see, you can see the tube slides so much. So anyways, let's try this out. I'm going to put this axle end through this wheel here. Hmm. There seems to be like a little lip there. There's a tiny little kink in the axle. And I want to put this on the tube. Then I want to slide this through here. Okay, so it looks like the tube is properly with at least for this particular casting. But I definitely know that the axle end is too long now because it's just going to stick out a lot. Right? Let me just do it anyways just to show you guys. Yeah, it's bottoming out, but yeah, I just think there's too much play there. <clears throat> All right, so there's just no need for look how much of that axle is. It's passing the the center line of the car, right? So I almost think it's possible that that little kink in the axle is maybe meant to be a trim mark. Not exactly sure, but that's that's where I'm gonna trim it. So you naturally you want to use some good cutters that are strong enough to cut through this this thing. And wear safety glasses because that piece of metal will definitely take your eye out. Okay. So at this point, I know that that I know the axle end isn't passing the center line of the car, so I'm quite confident I can glue this one in place. So I'm just going to grab some crazy glue here. And actually, I like to just put it on some packaging plastic there. Dab this in. Now you notice I didn't even glue in the center of the wheel. It might not even be necessary. Well, let me let me do it right, like the instructions said. 
So here's a tip I, I learned doing this before on a Hot Wheels. So I put the photo ice piece on the axle itself and then I can just go around this metal piece add a little bit of crazy glue to the back side okay then I can slide that axle in through the wheel then pull the wheel down onto that so if the glue is on the back side of that photo edge piece, in theory, it should now be glued to the wheel, assuming you cleaned it off. Mm, yeah, I don't see it's... No, oh, no, it does spin still. Mm, well, I don't know how else to do it nicer, because if you glue it from the outside, you're going to see all the glue. Or you got to be methodical and perhaps take a toothpick and just make sure there's a big dab of glue you know on those ledges but because the axle traps that disc and I'm not rolling this down like a Hot Wheels track I'm not really that concerned about it I do know again this axle end is too long alright so Tap the end of this here, find a tube, now the problem is, is the thing is so recessed you gotta push this axle end into that tube but you have to also make sure it doesn't push out the other side because I crazy glued that, I think that first side, the crazy glue is now set. Oh, no, it did push it out. You can see it a little there. So, another tip that I learned is maybe you could take a thin magnet. So let me find one here. Or dr mini drill bits. But anyway, so here's this magnet, right? It's pushing against that axle end. Hmm. Now, I think this magnet might be too thick. Or not. Let me see. Actually, it might have worked. So, let me just push that in. I think if you had two of these micro uh, drill bits, this is a, you know, you could just push both sides. So, none of the axles, you know, slip loose. But uh, I think in this case, that little magnet did work. Right, I don't see... No, it didn't. Sorry. Oh, boy, I'm never prepared. I don't really prepare for these videos. Oh, luckily, my electric screwdriver is nearby, which also has one of these mini things, so... Okay, I did hear it pop a little bit more. Okay, so now that axle is in totally. So you, you, it just has to be something really small because that's the small inner diameter of the wheel. Uh, and also I pushed it so hard it doesn't really want to roll. But I'm actually okay with that because I don't like rolling models. They just fall off my displays. You'll notice the tires here. There, there's no like wedge inside the tire. Let me take a tire off and show you. The wheel is perfectly flat. There seems to be an outer ledge, so it keeps the tire from falling off, but... Well, I guess that's actually a smarter idea than having a central ledge. Hmm. Alright. Not dwelling on that. So let's do this one more time. So... I'm going to apply... Crazy Glue to the back side of this disc. And I'm going to put this through the wheel, pull it tight, okay, 
film here. I might as well trim the axle a little bit because I know it's too long. Safety glasses. Then I can glue this into the tube. And, you know, I'm going to push this axle in. So hopefully that'll set. While that's doing that, I will prepare the next one. So axle end through the photo wedge. Naturally, you want to make sure the photo wedge part, the detail part, is facing the outside, right? Because the backside is perfectly smooth, and that's not what you're paying for. I want to be a little less hasty than me there. Okay, the wheel. Pull it through. Trim off the axle end, safety glasses. Okay, so that one's going to wait for a second. <clears throat> now that this thing is glued, I'll put it through the chassis. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. This one is wider. The width spacing is wider, so you really should test fit all this stuff. But luckily, you know, there's so much axle still showing, it's going to grab that much. So I lucked out. Just put a dab of glue on there. Okay, now again, I want to push these axle ends against each other. Seems to be okay. Alright. I'm not going to put the interior in right now because I'm going to paint it anyways. But there we go. That's a rough uh, idea of what it's going to look like. Alright. Okay, so let me come back. I'm going to put all these wheels on other Grachan cars and probably paint the interiors on things that don't have colored roll cages. And then uh, we'll let them go for a spin. Many hours later, I am finished. Okay, so I learned a few more things I thought I'd just discuss. So first, some of these are rolling with the axle ends as, you know, B and DS uh, originally designed. There you go. But look how big the axle end is. It's actually covering up the lug nut details in the uh, photo wedge part. With the silver ones, eh, I figured I'll just leave it with the axle ends. But the gold ones, I decided to just not put the axle ends in because it just looks weird. I mean, these lug nut details are so close to that axle hole that they're mostly covered up by that axle end. So, the way to get around that is just to use uh, some sort of poster mounting putty. I use Potafix Pro. And, uh, you know, you can even set camber and stuff like that if you wanted to, because it's a putty now. Um, let me pull up a different... Here we go. My, my favorite Hakosuka. This has... Uh, the gold wheels but no axle ends because it's using the putty and this is what I want to show you. you you can get some steering you know quite easily with the the putty as well the great thing about poster well at least Potafix Pro putty is it doesn't leave a mark it doesn't ruin paint it this is like an inert moldable plastic it never seems to harden either so it's quite good you can reuse it again and again but obviously you know you can get some nice poses and then, you know, if you really want to get that JDM style, you got to set the camber as well. So, that's what uh, some of the tips I learned. Uh, some of the more narrow cars, like this guy, I actually had to trim off the tube that the axle lens went into. This one's using the axle lens. You can't just use clippers because you'll crush the tube itself. So, I had to use a Dremel cutting wheel, you know, and, and cut the tube that way. 
That way the axle end will still go into the tube because it wasn't crushed by some, you know, clippers. So, yeah, again, look how big that is. It's covering up some of the lug nut details. So, well, I left some with the axles. Most I left some with Potter Fix Pro. Let me uh, get this focal point here. You can see some of the wheels rolling around. Uh, they're definitely better than the stock wheels. I mean, the stock wheels just being silver painted plastic, they just don't have the bling factor, right? So, in fact, let me put the stock wheels up here on some of these guys. Yeah, it's just not, it's not as cool. All right. Well, I know that the BNDS has a lot more uh, styles of wheels. It's just that they're they're really expensive. I, I kind of feel like they're too expensive compared to other alloy wheels. I mean, some of those Word C wheels you can get for seven dollars delivered, and they have brake systems in them. You know, these these don't have any brake systems, as you saw me when I was putting them together. So BNDS, you, you're kind of falling behind, I think. The only advantage to these particular wheels is they're small enough they're that they can fit these Grachan cars. But, you know, if you're rolling, running regular vehicles that don't have this lowered suspension look, I, I don't know if I would buy these. They're just so expensive. Alright, everything's relative, of course. I mean, it's a hobby, right? Yeah, hobbies in financial sense don't uh, are never said in the same sentence so okay guys well i appreciate you watching and uh see you the next time i do a wheel swap